The Zarge is here ready for some military action in today's game, Battlezone for your Atari 2600. Featuring box art that uh, has you blowing stuff up. Great, let's go ahead and take Battlezone, pop it in my Atari 7800 Pro system and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. Boom. Battlezone was published by Atari and carries a copyright year of 1983. It is based on the popular 1980 Atari arcade game. It was programmed by Mike Feinstein, who also programmed the 2600 version of Joust, which I reviewed in episode 213. Battlezone is a tank action game for one player only and has three difficulty modes. According to the manual, it is the futuristic year of 1999. Wow, and the nations of the world have declared peace. However, a group of military leaders aren't happy with this truce. So using state-of-the-art tanks and flying saucers, they have decided to begin their own war. Now it's up to you to stop them using an old tank you found in a museum. Now aren't you glad museums keep military weapons fully operational for instances just like this? For the game, you use a joystick to move the tank and the button to fire your cannon. Pressing up on the joystick will move you forward while pressing down will move you backward. Pressing left or right will rotate you in that direction while stationary. Using diagonals will move your tank in an arc. You can only fire one shot at a time, and if you miss, you must wait a couple of seconds before you can shoot again. You can face up to four different styles of enemies in the game. The regular slow-moving tanks have a blue turret. Flying saucers have a pinkish red color and are more of a nuisance than anything else since they will never fire at you. Fighters are yellow flying vehicles that will come after you and shoot you when close. Super tanks have a yellow turret and can move much quicker than your standard tank. Scoring wise you get 1000 points per regular tank, 2000 points for the fighters, 3000 points for the super tank and 5000 points for the hard to hit flying saucers. You start the game with 5 tanks and get a bonus tank at 50,000 and 100,000 points. Graphically speaking, I think the game looks great. Yes, it's nothing like the original black and green vector graphics of the original arcade game, but I really like this colorful rendition. Personally, I actually prefer it over the original vector graphics. I like how the tanks are nice and large, and I also like the radar screen that's at the top. The scrambled up graphics that appear when you're destroyed was also a nice touch. I will add that I noticed on some Atari 7800 systems, the graphics were a bit more shaky than normal. Adjusting a small dial within the system that controls the color of the 2600 graphics seems to fix this. The limited music and sound effects were also nicely done. Family friendly wise, all you have is just your basic tank action. At the time my research on eBay, loose copies were going for $6 to $8, complete copies were going for $14, and new were going for $15 to $20, and those prices include the shipping. So what did I think of Battlezone on the 2600? I thought it looked great, sounded great, and played great. Battlezone is just plain fun. So where am I going to rank Battlezone? Well, for the second game in a row, we are looking in the top 10. Now, a game I just put at number 6, California Games, does offer a little bit more, but I actually think I enjoy Battlezone a little bit more than Phoenix at 7. So out of the 79 games I've ranked on the Atari 2600, Battlezone is rolling in in the number 7 position. Battlezone may not look like the arcade version, but it's still a blast to play. If you enjoy retro related videos, would you please click like and subscribe? You can also follow me both on the Facebook or the Twitter. You can also support the show on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash nosweargamer for more information. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the Noswear Gamer. Take care, and remember, in case of war, go to your local museum for a tank.